All right, kind of had a little vacation in the middle of class here. I guess we could call that our fall break. Now back to business. And what we're going to do is we're going to review what we've done so far with PHP, and then we're going to look forward to more stuff that we're going to do with PHP. Um, to, re to review the way PHP works, PHP is a server-side script, which means that it has to run through a web server in order to be processed. So we have our client connected through the internet to the server. All the responsive pages that we've talked about so far, the client makes a request, the server sends back an HTML document that contains CSS, JavaScript, sort of in a package. And the browser is what brings this page to life. It does a responsive business of figuring out, OK, what style sheet to apply in the case of media queries, and so on. So the server's job up to this point, we really, it really hasn't had a job. It's just delivering the files. And the browser is what applies, runs the media queries, and applies these things. Server-side scripting happens on the server, which means it is involved in the preparation of this web page, which means a couple of things. Number one, we can make the page custom to certain parameters of the user. Uh, for example, we can um, identify where the person is located and give them search results custom to their location, like Google does. If you Google something, your results are going to be based on where you where you are, where where your um, where the where they think you are based on your IP address, which may or may not be accurate, by the way, but typically is pretty accurate. It's not going to be accurate to the exact location, but it should be like accurate to the general region that you're in. All right. We could customize it to show different download links if you're visiting on a Mac versus a PC. I've been downloading a lot of stuff for the Android class, and I've been doing it on my Mac. And typically, when I go to the page, then it, it gives me the download link for the Mac, not the download uh, um, link for the PC. So the script on the server side can take this request, which is a URL, any data from the form that the user has entered in, and a bunch of request parameters, such as the IP address making the request. And such as the user agent, which is the browser. And using those things, it can customize a web page for that. Now, we haven't looked at that yet. We've looked at redirection, but we haven't looked at customizing the page based on the request parameters. But that's one of the things that we're going to look at. And what that means is, is the script is going to look, it's going to examine these things. And it's going to decide, hey, they're on a Mac, so I'm going to do this. They're on a PC, so I'm going to do this. They are on a mobile device, so I am not going to show five links, and so on. Keep in mind as we go through these things that these are just a bunch of tools that we're adding to the toolbox that you can pick and choose when you need for a particular project. For example, you could say, gee, couldn't I hide the links or hide images via the style sheet and, and the query, uh, um, uh, media query. And the answer is yes, you could. But you're still going to be sending the file over. All right? Whereas, and you're simply going to make it not visible. With PHP, we could not send those images over at all. All right? Which is different, which would say it was on bandwidth and so on. So we can use PHP, number one, to customize our web pages for mobile versus desktop. 
A different variation of that is the whole notion of having a separate site and a redirect. A separate site with a redirect is going to take the site and it's going to have a traffic cop, going to have a script that's a traffic cop and send the user one way or another depending on whether they're on a mobile browser or a desktop browser. So there'll be a snippet of HTML code that will look at the user agent and it will decide and it will deliver one of two web pages depending on um, which, uh, which kind of system that they're on. Now, the danger that you run into with having a duplicate web page, or not a duplicate, but a second web page, a second version, a mobile version, and a desktop version, is that there's some stuff that you might want to have in common. For example, you, have, you might have your organization's mission statement on your website, on your home page. You don't want to have to have that living in two places, right? Because if it does, then if you change something about it, you're going to have to change that code in two places. And that's where the notion of an include file is going to come in. An include file allows us to put a chunk of any kind of code that we want into a separate file, and then we can use that file to um, share it between several different pages. So for example, if there's a footer that has like the company's address and, and email address and phone number, and that's going to be both on the mobile site and on the desktop site, instead of having it coded twice, we're going to put it in an include file, and then a bunch of pages can share it. Both the desktop and the version, uh, both the desktop and the mobile version, and all of the pages within those two versions. Because remember, we're not just talking about one page, we're talking about an entire site. So you redirect to a desktop page, that's going to get the desktop pages. Redirect to a mobile site, we're going to redirect to a, a whole set of mobile pages. So the goal of this first part of PHP, which we'll do today, and a continuation of what we've done in, what we've done in previous weeks, is we're going to learn about Number one, user agent detection and redirection. Two, we're going to take a look at how if statements work in PHP. And lastly, we're going to consider include files. <coughs> So depending on how long we go today, you know, we'll probably touch on all these topics and we'll probably build on it in subsequent classes. I'm going to talk a little bit about how I'm going to set this up. And keep in mind again, this is not the only way that you could set this up. You could set this up other different ways, a bunch of different ways. But this is the way that I'm going to set up this particular project. I'm going to start with my web server's root directory. Now, that's usually represented by a slash. In other words, if you go to www.lorainccc.edu slash, what comes after that is based on whatever the web server's root directory is. Now, because I'm running IIS, Microsoft's Internet Information <laughs> Services, my root directory is C, inet, pub, www root. Now, if you've installed WAMP or XAMP or any of those other ones, your root might be in a different location. All right? But in, in, or if, and if you work in the labs downstairs, this will be your root directory. So everything is based off that. That's the starting point. All right? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a single file in that root directory called index.php. All right? And I'm going to have two folders underneath it called full and mobile. And 
And the full presumably would have more pages than the mobile, right? Because the whole idea of a mobile is that it's somewhat scaled down. So maybe the full site will have its own index.php and then maybe page one PHP through page eight, let's say, PHP. The mobile site may only have the index and maybe page one PHP through page three. I'm going to have one more folder in the web server root, and that is going to be my include files. So this is going to have all the common code in it. Alright, let's get all the common code. So maybe my banner is common on both pages, or maybe whatever is common in both pages. I could call this, in fact, let's, let's change this a little bit, because I could call this common. Because maybe I want to even put some CSS files in here. Alright, so this will include includes and CSS and any sections, and maybe even JavaScript, any sections of code that we want to share. Maybe I have an images folder too. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create that. We'll build this incrementally. All right. We'll first go in and we'll create our main index page that does the redirection. And then we will um, build on there to build our two pages to look different, to have more stuff on it. Again, remember the full version of the site is going to have more stuff on it than the um, mobile version is. Now, one thing that we'll get to, and I'm not sure we'll get to it today, but we will get to it at some point, is oftentimes mobile versions of the site will give you the option to get to the full site. All right. Typically, mobile versions of a site are scaled down, so they may have only a subset of the functionality. Well, you may want some of the functionality that they haven't put in the mobile site. Well, oftentimes what they'll do is they'll give you the option to click to the full site. So the idea is, you know, it's kind of like, well, I have an unusual case. I know you didn't expect anyone to want this information on a mobile device, but I do. So I'm going to click on this and I'll get to the full version of the site. So we'll see how to do that later. Now, in doing this, we're going to use redirection. We're going to use include files, and we're going to use PHP if statements to alter the content from one page to another. All right. Let's start. One thing that's weird about the way that the machines are set up here is um, the typical user doesn't have permissions to access CI Netpub WW root. So we have to build stuff in another folder and copy it over. So, CINETPUB WW root is my web server's root. Now, this has some files that came with it, some default files. I'm going to clear all those out because I don't really need those. So, I'll go and I'll clear that out. I love how I like, can't add a file here. Or I can't save a file in here, but I can go and delete stuff. Let me create a new folder, and I'm going to call this full. 
and I'm going to create a second fold, new folder, and I'm going to call it mobile. All right. So I'm going to have three index PHPs when I'm done. One in the root, one in the full, and one in the mobile. And the one in the root is going to be the traffic cop that's going to direct the request to either the full or the mobile. All right. So let's go in and Let's go in and I'm going to start just by making a basic home page for the full site and a basic home page for the mobile site. I'm not going to do anything fancy with include files or anything like that now. I am going to save them as PHP files though, even though I'm not going to have any real PHP code in here. Why? Well, because I know later on I am going to put PHP code in them. So I'll just go and make this your standard garden variety HTML5 document. And I'm just going to put a message for now that says I am on my full version of the site. Full versions homepage. <laughs> now I'm going to go and save it in my in CI Netpub root if it lets me. In the full folder. Save it as a PHP file somewhere down here. And I'll call it index.php. Save it. Would you, uh, would you like to say it's not letting me, so I'm going to just save it in the desktop and copy it over. All right, so I saved it on the desktop, and then I'll copy it over. So weird how that works. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to make another copy of it and put it in the mobile folder and I'll call it the mobile versions home page. So, I have those two home pages. One is in the mobile folder and one is in the full folder. How do I access those in my web browser? You go to your emulator and then... Um... Well, we could go to the emulator, but we're, ju we're just going to run the regular browser right now. Then you would type in the URL, um, localhost, and then forward slash, and then the name of the folder. Right. 
So in this case, if I wanted the full version of the site, I'm going to type in localhost, maybe, localhost slash full slash index dot php. And there's the full version's website. Now, let's make sure we understand how we got there, right? CINET pub ww root, remember, is the root directory. So localhost by itself gets me to the root directory. So without any folder designation following it, it simply refers to the files in the web server's root. If I want in a subdirectory of the web server's root, I have to put then the folder. So this time I'll do mobile and I'll type in index.php. We have the mobile version of the home page. Now, we don't want the user to have to know, gee, if I want the full version, I'll type in www.mikezellers.com slash full. If I want the mobile version, I'll type in www.mikezellers.com slash mobile. I don't want the user to have to know that. I want this to happen transparently. So if they go to my website, I want it to automatically come up to the proper one. So what I'm going to want to have is I'm going to have a traffic cop in the root that's going to be the index. And that index will point them to one of the two different places. All right. So that code, we can go, and it's going to be PHP. And it's going to come from that Detect Mobile Browsers script that we saw. So we'll say I want the PHP code. I open it up. I can copy and paste it in here. And I'm going to make a slight change to it. I'm going to change the location, but I'm going to put two parts to this if statement. Right now, this if statement only has the true part. This is a statement I do if it's true. So right now, this is coded to say, if this is a mobile device, redirect to the mobile version of the page. I'm now going to put in code that says if it's not a mobile device, direct redirect to the full version. So I'm going to change, I'm going to expand my if statement a little bit to look like this. So either way, I'm redirecting. And again, the location in the case of a mobile device is, I'm going to uh, redirect to, what will be my address? Well, right now I'm in the root, so I want to send it down to the mobile folder. And the file is index.php. For this one, it's going to be the same thing, except I'm going to send it to the full folder.php. So this code is now my traffic cop. It's going to live in the web server's root, and anyone that requests my site is first going to go through this page. So if I type in my domain name, www.whatever.com. That's the equivalent of typing in just localhost. All right? So I'm going to type, if I go and visit the index page here, it's going to send them to one of two different places. Either it's going to send them to the full version or to the mobile version. 
So let me go and save this. Question. Which yeah. index file did you add that to? This is going to be the one that's in the root folder. So I have three index files. I have the index that's in the root, and all it does is redirect. I'm then going to have, it's going to redirect it either to the full directory or to the mobile directory. So now, in the browser, I go and type in localhost index.php. What is that going to do? That's going to call the index PHP that's in the root. What's that going to do? It's going to look at the user agent and it's going to decide is this a mobile request or is this a desktop request. If it's a mobile request it's going to redirect them to the mobile folder and the index.php in that folder. If not it's going to redirect it to the full version. So sure enough here boom I got redirected to the full version. So notice, watch the URL, as the URL changes. I type in index.php. Right now, as I type it in, the URL is localhost slash index.php. I hit return, and it got sent to full index.php. So effectively, I'm going to have two sites. One in a full folder, one in a mobile folder. All right? And the only thing that's going to live in the root is going to be the redirection script that's going to send them to the appropriate place. Now, if we open this up in a mobile emulator, keep in mind, I can't just drag the page over like I did with my HTML pages, I have to ask the web server for it. So I have to type in localhost slash index.php and notice I got sent to the mobile version of the home page. And notice that the URL got changed. And again, you'll notice this on actual sites, you know. You go to Amazon, you get sent, you, you stay in www.amazon.com. You access Amazon from a mobile device. All right, made a liar out of me. CNN. Any more with all the bad news, I'm reluctant to do news <laughs> sites. Yeah, you know. All right, yeah, there. We get, we get redirected to m.cnn.com, whereas if we access it through the regular browser, we just stay in regular cnn.com. So that's the same idea here. Their, their structure is a little different than mine, but the basic idea of it is the same. On CNN site, there is a, quote, traffic cop that says, hey, if you are a mobile device, then you get these pages that are over here. They used a subdomain instead of a separate folder. A separate full, uh, a subdomain really is simply a another domain that maps to a folder. So they have a folder out on their web server too, they just created a subdomain for it. All right, is everyone clear about this part of it? We have a page that does the redirection. In the example that we went over last time that we had a lecture, I had the code that did the redirection right in the home page. And you can do that, but this is a different way to do it. Keep in mind, again, we're interested in just showing tools that you can use to, to expand uh, on that. So, now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to make some code, and we're going to start adding stuff to these pages. And we're going to add some stuff that is in common 
for these. Before I do that, let me see if I have permission to do one little thing. Because I think it would be cool if I could demonstrate this. Let's see if I have permission. This is actually the software that is running the web server. And you can see there's our little files in here. All right. What I want to do is I want to go and set the default document for this. The default document is a list of documents that it's going to look for in order of priority. So if you notice, when I typed in CNN.com, I didn't type in CNN.com slash index.php or index.html or anything like that. I typed in just the domain name and it took me to some web page. The web server itself controls that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, oops, I'm going to put index.php at the very top of this list. What does that mean? That means I don't have to type in index.php. I just give my domain. Well, what's my domain? Our pseudo domain is index.php. Uh, I'm sorry, is uh, localhost. So if I go here and just type in localhost, because of my settings in the web server, it's going to first look for localhost index.php. So just by typing in localhost and nothing else, <laughs> have me worried there for a second. It eventually made it over to that. How did it do that? Well, because I set the web server to have to look first, if there's no page indicated, Look for index.php. That index.php in the root is a traffic count. It looks at and it redirects either to the full or to the desktop version. Oh, right. go ahead. Why did that change? Uh, that's a good question. I think the idea is this. I can put I can define a list of default documents for any website on this server. A single IIS server could actually service several different sites. Okay? And I can set those default documents for all of the sites on this server. All right? I didn't make the change for the default for the server. I made this change specifically for this single website. So if I'd have made it up here, I wouldn't have gotten that message. What happened is, is when I went in here originally, this list wasn't defined for this specific website. It was defined as the server overall. I went in and made a change to this, and it broke that inheritance. So now the, the, de the, the default pages I have listed here are just for this site on this server. If I were to create a second uh, site for this server, then it would use the defaults that were defined on the level above it. So good observation. All right. Let's start putting.
putting in some content in these pages, and let's start putting in some content that would likely be shared between the mobile and the desktop version. Okay? Now to do that, I'm going to put, I'm going to create another folder. I'm going to call it common. And my common folder is where I'm going to put the stuff that is in common. I'm going to put the include files, and I'm going to put um, maybe CSS files and images and anything that's going to be shared between these two different sites. I'm going to put in a common folder. And I'm going to put it on the same level as those other folders. All right. So let's start out by creating a header and a footer include file. Okay a header and a footer include file. So I'm just going to do something simple for this and we'll say that this is the classes website. Alright, so I will go in and I'll create excuse me Remember, what can I put into an include file? I can put anything that you want to put in any PHP page. So I can put CSS code, I could put JavaScript, I could put HTML, or I could put PHP code. In this case, we're, we're not going to do tons with PHP. We're going to do a little bit, but for this include file to start, I'm going to put... Um, just some basic HTML. Save that as on my desktop as an include file. Oops. I don't know if I have an option for that. I'm not seeing it if I do. It's called the Pascal source file. If I can read that correctly. It's called the what source file? Oh, interesting. So I can I can save it as an include file. Um, they must Pascal must also use that extension. So I'll call this a header. Dot inc. into my common folder. So now what I need to do is I need to access that include file from my full version and from my mobile version. So let me go in and edit this guy. And I'm going to replace this with my PHP tag, and I'm going to say include. Now, how do you get there? If I am in the full folder, and I want to get in the common folder, what do I have to do? You wouldn't just put common because full, or I'm sorry, because common is not under the full directory. Common and full are on the same level. Okay, So I'm in this directory here, the full directory. I have to go up and then down to the common folder. So how do you designate like in Windows command line or Unix command line? Dot dot. Dot dot, dot, dot takes me up to the parent folder. 
So I can't go directly from one sibling folder to another. I have to go up to the parent folder and then down to the sibling. So I will say include dot dot slash common slash header.inc. Notice that I am using the forward slash. All right? You might think to yourself, hey, I'm on Windows. Windows uses a backslash to separate folders. You're in the web world now. All right? In the web world, the convention for separating directories or the symbol used to separate directories is, a, is the, the regular slash. Is that way if you're doing images on just a plain old HTML page. So I'll put that here, and I'll put an H2 here that says home page. save it. Oh, and it let me. Good. Let me go and edit the mobile one as well. Make sure we save everything we have. I can go here and I can type in localhost again. It's going to call the index.php in the web server's root. How do I know that? Because I set the default web page. When I don't specify the name of a page, I've set the default web page for this site in my web server software to look first for index.php. So it's going to look for index.php. It's going to find it. That has code to look at the user agent and to set it to the page one or page two. All right, page one being the full version of the site, page two being the mobile version of the site. So I'm now on CISS 268 LCCC homepage. If I do the same thing, on the mobile site, I get redirected to the mobile home page. So the nice thing is, though, is I'm not duplicating effort. In other words, that banner lives in one place. That banner lives in that include file. Which means that if I go to change something about the banner, let's say instead of LCCC, I want to write out the full name. And in addition to CISS 268, I want to specify the name of the course. I can go and I have the advantage of only having to do that in the one place. So I'll go in common and I'll edit this include file and... stuff on this.
I'll go and save that. And it's just like the idea of CSS or external JavaScript files. I instantly get that change the next time that I ask for it. And I keep those consistent. All right. Now you might say, maybe I want a picture in the header of the full version, and I don't want the picture in the desktop version. Uh, wait a minute, I, I think I said the, uh, I contradicted myself. Let's say I want a picture in the desktop version, but not in the mobile version. How could I do that? Well, I could put it in index.php, but let's say I want that on the banner on every desktop page. All right, let's go. And what I could do is this. Let's go and let's find LCC's logo. PNG file called LCCC logo. Doesn't really matter where I put it, I'm going to put it in the common folder. All right. I could go in and I could go and add that to the header include file. There we go. Keep in mind that when you're doing relative paths with this, it's based not where the include file is, but where the original source file is. So my source file is in full. So to access this, I still have, just like with the include file, I have to go dot, dot, slash, common, include. I have to do dot, dot, slash, common, the image name. Now, that's all well and good, but... I also get it on the mobile version. And what we said before is I don't want it on the mobile version. All right? Well, what could I do? Solution one is I could put, cut this code out and put it somewhere on index.php. Well, the problem with that is what if I want this logo on all of my full site's pages? Then I'd have to do that on every single page. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I'm running PHP here, and I'm going to put some intelligence in my include file to say, hey, if you're on a mobile page, then don't show the image. If you are on a mobile page, then, oh, I'm sorry, if you are not on a mobile page, then show the image. If you are on a mobile page, do not show the image. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set a PHP variable
on the top of, I can really do it anywhere, but I'm going to do it right here. I'm going to say full equals true, mobile equals false. How do you make a variable in PHP? You just start using it. All right? It's kind of goofy, and it can cause problems. You, you think that that's kind of cool. You don't have to go through all that trouble of declaring a variable and typing in an extra line of code, right? which you're far too busy to do. But you, it can lead to trouble. But in this case, all I have to do is define a variable called full and a variable called mobile, and I'm setting the one to true, Remember, this is my full page, and the other one I'm setting to false. I'm going to do the same thing on my mobile page, but I'm going to reverse these. One thing about variables in PHP, they begin with a dollar sign. I think we even saw that in my redirect command. That's a variable, the server variable, and that's what I'm using for the user agent. I'm going to go and put the viewport command in the mobile version just to be complete. Bigger. All right. Now, what I want to do is I want to go into my PHP include file and I want to make my PHP include file smart. By smart, I mean I want it to be smart enough to know that I only want to sometimes display that image tag. Okay? I only sometimes want to display that image tag. So, what I'll do is, I'll go in here, and I will start a PHP statement. This is how PHP starts to get weird. I can open up PHP, and I can start a PHP statement. If, parenthesis, dollar sign, full. brace. I can pop out a PHP. I can then have HTML and I need to pop back into PHP to close it. I think that's right. Let me go and look. Alright, doesn't show on the mobile. It does show on the full version, like before. Let's go and let's analyze this statement. Let's look at the way PHP statements work and see what I did in this case. If 
you remember, in both pages I had a variable called full and mobile. And on the full version, I set the full to true and the mobile to false. On the mobile version, I did just the opposite, false and then true. So, my PHP statement looks something like this. If PHP if statements look like this, all right? It's very similar. It would be the way a uh, if statement would look like in JavaScript. It would be the way that an if statement would look like in C sharp. It would be the way an if statement would look like in Java. So this is a pretty common form for an if statement. And the way that this works is I have a condition within the parentheses. The condition is something that translates to either true or false. All right. I could say if hours are greater than 40, calculate overtime. If the person is, um, you know, if, if the credit card date is, is prior to today, then reject the purchase because the credit card's expired. Whatever. But there's a condition that evaluates to either true or false. I then have a chunk of code that I do if the condition is true. Alright. I optionally have a block of code that I can do if the condition is false. In this case, we don't have the false part because it's not like we're putting a different image up if it's mobile. We could do that, right? We could put a different uh, image up if it was a mobile version as opposed to the full version. Now, this has the advantage of, in this case, the mobile version I'm not downloading the image, so I'm saving bandwidth. It's not like the CSS solutions where I send the image and then I hide it or make it invisible or make no display property for it. So this is a good case of actually using the script to, to, to get a win here. The win is we don't even bother sending that if it's a mobile device. Okay. So my particular if statement doesn't have a false part. It just has a true part. All right? Now, that true part could be some PHP statements. In the example that we looked at at the beginning of the class, the statement was to redirect the user to one place or the other. But, and here's the big but which gets to be confusing. We can pop in and out of PHP and stick in HTML code. So, what I've done is I've popped out of PHP, I have my HTML code, which is an image tag, of the way. And then I pop back into PHP to end the if statement. So in this case, if the condition is true, this HTML gets sent to the client. If this condition is false, then we don't send anything in this part. Yes? In your if statement, though, you just put it on dollar sign Right. I just put dollar sign full. The reason I did that is because full is already a Boolean. All right. Full is already true or false. I know that because I, when I created the variable, I, I'm always setting it to either true or false. 
Now, this is a case where MPHP can get into trouble because I could make fool equal to anything. But I know that, uh, you know, as long as I do it right, I'm going to always set it to true or false. This is the equivalent of saying if fool equals true. Because we only have one conditional? Well, because fool I know is a Boolean. All right. I know it's a Boolean because that's the only values I set it to, is either true or false. So I can get by by just saying if the variable. If it's clear to you, and I could go in and change it in the example, I could say if, if full equals true. Equal, equal, true. All right. Notice also that there's two equal signs. So two equal signs indicate that there's a comparison done. In other words, we're looking to see, does the variable full contain a true? Does it match true? If it does, then the condition is true. Otherwise, the condition is false. So let's go back and look at this with this in mind and revisit this. Okay, in my header include file I have if dollar sign full, which I know, right, that dollar sign full is a Boolean because I'm setting it to either true or false in both cases. True or false. I could alternately say if it equals true with two equal signs, and those two would be equivalent. If it's true, I'm going to display this piece of HTML. Which piece of HTML? The piece of HTML that's between this bracket and that bracket. So it's kind of weird. I start the if statement, and I have the curly bracket, and then I pop out a PHP. And then I could have a whole bunch of code here. I could have 10 images here. But when I'm done, I need to say, hey, that's the end of the true block. So I need to do the curly. Um, I need to do the, the ending curly block. Now I don't have an else in this case, otherwise I could put the else here. And do something else if it was um, not, um, not the full version. If we do a view source, we'll see. If I do a view source here, obviously this one gets the image. If I do a view source here, shoot, I don't think I'm allowed to. Well, you have to take my word for it. This doesn't contain the image at all. So the image is not downloaded. So it offers a savings of uh, it offers a savings of um, we don't bother downloading um, the image and hiding it in the case of a mobile device. We just aren't showing it. Or we just aren't sending it at all. Which would you prefer? Visibility method or to do it this way? It depends. If you're talking about smaller images, all right, um, if you're talking about the, you know, possibly giving the user options to turn things on or off, um, if it's smaller images, then the visibility part is fine. You, you can do that via CSS. Um, if you're talking about like a lot of images or a lot of stuff, then maybe you would, you would take the server side. Again, you know, it, it, it all depends on the particular problem and context that you're dealing with. Notice what we've done. We've, we've achieved the three things that I wanted to today. And I just want to review and repeat those things. 
What were the three things? We wanted to do user agent detection and redirect. We did that. We wanted to use include files to eliminate redundant code. We did that. All right, only one, but we did that. Lastly, we used if statements in PHP to customize our common code based on certain conditions. The conditions in this case being whether they were on mobile or full version of the site. All right. The user agent detection and redirection happens here. We grab the user agent from the request and we redirect to one of two places, either the full version or the mobile version. The include files, we put, we created one include file for the banner that we include both in our mobile and in our desktop version. And in that way we can ensure some level of consistency between the two without having to duplicate that. So if we come around and we change the course number of CISS 268 to CISS 267, for example, I don't have to change it in two places. I can just change it in the one include file, and I'm all set. The last thing we did is we, even though we're using an include file for common code, we can customize that a little bit. All right? The issue that I had is I wanted to show an image in the full version or I did not want to show the image in the mobile version. So I can put if statements in my PHP include files to look to see, hey, if you're on a mobile device, then uh, don't show this image. If you are on a desktop device, then show this image. We're going to go and we're going to extend this. Now notice I haven't done anything style-wise yet. All right. Um, I could go in and do, you know, a, a, a jQuery mobile theme for the mobile version and then do uh, a nice little progressive enhancement uh, for the um, desktop version. A couple things to remember. Sometimes this user agent detection doesn't work. You can actually have your browser spoof and say that it's something else. And, and so it doesn't always work exactly right. In addition, I mentioned before that in some cases a, a user of the mobile site might want to use the full version of the site. So it would be nice if on our mobile site we had a link to say go to the full version of the site. And we'll look at doing that next time as well. So next class we'll build on this to put even more higher degree of customization and then maybe play a bit with the styling for this. These things, again, don't replace the stuff that we learned in the first part of class. They're simply additional tools that we can use in crafting a solution for a given problem. Yes? In the homework assignment, you said you wanted us to add a page. Um, right. If you could further branch on that, I was kind of lost on your instructions. Okay, well, let's look at the instructions. Pick a topic and create a web page that has a desktop and mobile version. Make sure there's substantial difference in content between the two versions. Have a home page that will redirect the user to the proper page based on the user agent. Use responsive techniques and take steps to ensure that the common content is consistent. Number six says add to lab five one more page. A desktop and mobile version of that one page and another page just for the desktop. So you're making a little mini site here. On lab five, you have two home pages, all right, or two pages, right. a mobile and a desktop. When you're done with lab six, you're going to add three more pages, so you have a total of five. Three of them 
for the desktop version, two of them for the mobile version. So, I, I, can, I can see where that's confusing in reading it. In lab five, you develop page A, a desktop and a mobile version. For lab six, you're going to develop a page B for both of these versions, and you're going to develop a page C that's only for the desktop. All right, that doesn't have a mobile version for page C. What's the point of this? The point of this is you're going to have to customize your navigation so that if you're on the desktop, you get three links. If you're on the mobile, you get two links is the bottom line. So for lab six, you create three pages, a desktop and mobile of a second page, and then a third page for desktop only. You're creating, you're creating a B page and a C page. So lab five, you created this. So we can use our A content for our B? No, you use your A content for the first page. You'll create a second page in lab six. Lab six, you'll turn in five pages. Okay. The two that you, turn, you did for five. Right. Another page that has two versions. So just like A, but on a different. We're creating two different websites. To, okay. You're creating two different web. Yeah, you're creating two different websites. The desktop version has three pages in it. The mobile version only has two. Okay. All right. Keep in mind that when I say make another page about a different topic, it's not that you have to go and write tremendous volumes and all that. The thing is, and, and the point is, is I want to make sure that. The net, that, that you have, like, you use include files and things like that to keep these two pages, or keep these two sites consistent. But yet, they're not going to be completely consistent because the desktop's going to have three links and the mobile version's going to have two. I understand. Okay.